All right, good evening, church. Good evening. Welcome. What a beautiful sunny day it is, but mm-hmm. um, still a little bit chilly out. But uh, <laughs> I know you look out first thing in the morning. You look out, blue sky, sunshine. But then as soon as you step out, oh man, I wish I wore a warmer coat. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife said that we're going to go for a walk today, so I hope it warms up uh, drastically before then. So. Well, let's get into the word today. Uh, tune in with us to Deuteronomy chapter five. This is the Ten Commandments. Is where All it right. starts. I love talking about this, and they're not just mm. ten great suggestions. I mm. I always try to tell people that, that these were these were designed, written for for a purpose and for a reason. Mm-hmm. And so, as we read through these, just I uh, just just try to understand why God had had put these in place for us. So, I'll mm. get us going here. It says uh, Deuteronomy chapter five, verse one says, "Is then Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes." And the ordinances which I am speaking today in your hearing, that you may learn them and observe them carefully. Isn't that nice? Just those two things. Just just learn them (coughs) and then then, then, then follow them. That's it. Uh, The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. Uh, The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us. With Mm -hmm. all of those of us alive here today. This covenant was made for this specific group of people, but I, I truly believe it applies to us today as well. The Lord mm-hmm. spoke to you face to face at the mountain from the midst of the fire while I was standing between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up to the mountain, he said. And here's what he said. Verse 6, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you shall not make uh, for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the water or under the earth. For you shall not worship them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Uh, you know, let's just start with those first two uh, real quick. And, and we'll, I'd, I'd like to just kind of discuss these as we go through them. But, you know, Jesus, you know, in, in the New Testament, he, he breaks it all down basically into two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then to love your neighbor as yourself, right? Right, right? And so he starts off here just saying, here's who God is. And he says in the first commandment that um, you shall have no other gods before me. Why is that? Mm-hmm. Why is that the number one commandment? I mean, it, it makes sense, and we say, well, gosh, that's a little arrogant, but mm-hmm. why do you think it's so important that, that we don't have any other gods before, before God, God <clears throat> Almighty? <clears throat> it's, that's a really good question, actually. Because <clears throat> if we look in context, though, you think of who we're talking about. Number one, we're yeah. talking about God Almighty. It's incredible that you look in that context, though. The Lord talked with you face to face in yeah. the mount of the midst of the fire. Can you imagine the, the majestic glory of being face to face with God Almighty? How often does yeah. that even mention in there? Number one, we're talking about God. God, like I said, is a jealous God. He is the God, the creator, the author, the finisher of our faith. He has created everything. And then why we as human beings, we're, we're created with a need to worship, a need to long for something. We always have that thirst, that hunger and stuff. And so from the very beginning, we have to set our priorities straight. Number one, thou shall worship the Lord thy God, and him shall you only serve. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He is, number one, we have to acknowledge who he is. That's in order to establish his kingdom, we have to recognize yeah. him as yeah. the God of gods, the that's King a, of kings, the Lord of lords. That's a great phrase right there, to, to establish the king, uh, the, this, this kingdom of heaven, this kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. You know, I like that you, you mentioned, I was just thinking about this too, mm-hmm. you know, the midst of the fire there in verse 4, the Lord spoke to you face to face in the midst of the fire. Yes. And what does it say though? It goes, but you were afraid to go up to it. Like mm-hmm. this, like they, they, they saw the power of God. Right. They knew the power of God. They still want Moses to kind of be this mediator in between. Mm-hmm. And and then he goes, this is what God said. Listen, you can't have anyone else before me. Mm-hmm. And whether it was the fear of, 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 of what God was showing them, or whether it was the comfort of having, let's have Moses be the interceder. He goes, right. you can't worship Moses. Well, mm-hmm. I, I, 
God shares this now, but mm -hmm. what happens later on throughout Scripture? Like they want to follow, they want to follow Moses and Abraham and these people. They wanted something physical. They yeah. came and see person. and something they could see. They just right. came out of Egypt where everybody worshipped gods, right? You had right. to have something physical, and that's why it goes mm -hmm. into the second one. Don't make your, for yourself an idol. But I think the challenge that comes to us is: Have we put things above God? Like, have do we? <laughs> <laughs> To stand in the presence of God, mm. I mean Moses is like I can't. You can't even look at his face, right? Right. And right. just being in some of his presence, his whole countenance changed, and he come back and his face was glowing, glowing. right? Yes. And and so you know, were they afraid of that? Was that too much? And I I, I think I just want to encourage us that we can't be afraid of mm -mm. Of, of mm -hmm. the power of God because mm -hmm. there's also the love of God too, which I think mm -hmm. is is incredible. Let's right. go to the, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say. Being afraid of God, though, God is so majestic, so powerful. Like you said, Moses' face shone brilliant. We shouldn't be afraid of God through the... This was before Jesus. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus loved us enough to send it, to, to die on a cross, to send himself up on a cross. And because of that, it says, approach God's throne boldly. Yeah. We can have the boldness of God. Yeah. So don't be don't be afraid. Exactly. Um, and put him first. Yes. Don't, but don't. Yeah, that's that's good. All right. Why don't you read the next couple uh, commandments in here? Uh, verse eleven. Verse eleven. All right. Thank you. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord shall not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, <coughs> nor thy maids, manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thy ass, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> nor any of thy cattle, nor thy, I know on video, <laughs> nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out of thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep thy Sabbath day. That's good. You know, mm -hmm. it's interesting that just taking the Lord, the name of the Lord in vain mm -hmm. is, is is one of the Ten Commandments that you should not do that. Yeah, right, right. I don't want to spend a ton of time there. I think that's a great mm -hmm. uh, follow-up study for uh, you to maybe work on. But this mm. idea of observing the Sabbath, mm. I've talked about this multiple times, um, yes. that God has commanded us mm. to observe a Sabbath, to take, rest. to take rest. And that may be one of the most difficult things, I think, <laughs> for, for us, and I've, mm. I've shared this on Sundays many times, that we think well, it's a day that we can get caught up. We got, <laughs> we're just going to get caught up so, because we have to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> right. So we're going to get caught up on all these things. And, mm. and, but Jesus knew the importance of us taking rest. Yes. Not only on a weekly basis, but also I think, uh, I mean, you, you talk about on a seven-year basis, right. we talked about some of those things too, about the mm -hmm. land resting, but also as, as, as people, we need to rest. It's one of the things I always mm -hmm. encourage people to, uh, and our staff around here, like put your vacations on the calendar. Like you need to make sure you're taking some time off as well. And Why is that so important though? Why is the Sabbath so important, you think? I think it helps us, number one, it helps us to remember to take time and be still and know that He is God. Yeah. Because we get so phrase. caught up in our, in our life. We, we're, we like to do things. We like to be active. We like to <clears throat> feel like we actually have a purpose doing something. But God Himself, He worked for six days and He rested on yeah. the seventh day. He is the perfect example for us to follow. If God Himself rested on the seven and then he gives us command he made us he knows what is best for us so he said on the seventh day just step back rest relax recuperate yeah. refresh yourself it's like being at the well replenishing yourself so you can rejuvenate and put things back into proper perspective because if we get caught up with so much with daily life mm -hmm. we forget thou shall have no other gods yeah. before me and we no, place the truth we place other things before God. So take that day, rest, and worship God. Yeah. Well, I like what it says in verse 15. Mm -hmm. You should remember that you were a slave. Yes. It's a great time also to reflect on, you know what, 
you're not bound by those things anymore right. on this day. He sets us All right, free. <laughs> I'm going to finish these. I'm, I'm, we're just about our time here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be prolonged and that may go well with you on the land which the Lord God gives you. I love that commandment. It's one of the things we teach on quite often because it teaches mm -hmm. us to respect and understand authority, yes. whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes on, you shall not murder. Okay, these ones are kind of the, the well, duh. Uh, <laughs> you shall not commit adultery. Um, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, or his ma male servant or his female servant, his ox or his donkey, or anything that belongs mm -hmm. to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, then he goes on where Moses intercedes for them. But these commandments, they're not just to, don't do all these things. Right. God put these things in place to protect us. God put mm -hmm. these to protect us from ourselves. From ourselves. And so, mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, I think you said it best. God loves us. Yes. He sent his son for us. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he disciplines those he loves. Mm -hmm. He puts these things in place so we, we, we don't get hurt, I guess, are some of the things. I mean, I mm -hmm. think of the rules we made for our children, and our children didn't always understand. But it's like, you can't touch the fire. It will hurt. You know, okay. you need to not go play in this area. So, mm. all right, let us, you know what, Tim, I'm going to let you pray for people today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. It's great to review the Ten Commandments. Thank you for joining us this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, we just bow down before you and we just humble ourselves. We know you've given us the law, Heavenly Father, the Ten Commandments to Help us to protect us to be holy as you are holy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to fulfill the law because God knew that you, God, knew that we couldn't do it by ourselves. I pray, Lord, that you'll just reach down, touch each and every individual, open their eyes to see the truth. Help us to know that you are the loving God that cares for us, wants the best for us, watches over us, protects us. Be with us all and give us strength until the day you return. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Have Thank a great you. week, and we hope to see you all on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Bye.